Hi everyone. We're going to take a look at how you can create a little activity to do with um, manipulating text or it's called extracting text. So what I'm going to do first of all is put the text into my flip chart page here. So over out here I have um, a Word document. Okay, now I'm just going to choose Control A to select all, then Control C to copy it. Let's minimize that. And back in my flip chart, I'm then going to use Control V to paste it. Okay, and here is that text. And it, it probably does almost fit on my page. Um, I can resize this text if I want to in a couple of ways. If I double click on a text box like this, it will open on text like this, it will open the text box and I could stretch this if that would help. In this instance it doesn't. I could select all of that text and I could change the size of it here. This is a bit fiddly for me. I like to do things as quickly as possible. The quickest way you can resize text without having to open the text box, select all, resize is this. Click on it once, you have a big star and a little star. If I use the little star, it shrinks the text. In this instance though, I might have, if I'm thinking about um, doing this as a whole class activity, I might want the text really large. Okay, so all the students down the back could see it. And it could be that in this instance I'm modeling what the kids will be doing, um, and then I'm going to be leaving a group at the board to work on the rest of the document. So I'm going to make the text nice and big. Now the issue here, of course, is that then I can't see the end of this text. And what I don't want is for the kids to have to drag the text up and down. I just want the page to move up and down so that they can see all of the text as they need it. So I'm going to come to my main menu. I'm going to choose View and a thing called page extender down near the bottom. That then puts this little blue triangly thing here and when I click on it what it actually does is it extends my page in increments of 10%. Okay so I'm just going to click until mm. I can see the end there. All right and I can move this anywhere I can then turn this off if I wanted to um, but you'll notice I've now got a scrolly bar. Okay. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to now come to my shape library here and I'm just going to choose the vertical line and I'll choose red and I'll choose that thickness and I'm just going to put a vertical line on my page and because I'm using my mouse pad I've made a little booby there. Okay, let's just scroll down and I'll extend that a bit more. I'm just using the pulley buttons there to extend it. Right, now what's going to happen here is I'm going to set up an activity where the students are going to be taking words or phrases out of here depending on um, the part of speech or the focus. Maybe we're looking at the themes and I'm looking for them to find evidence in the text of the theme and I want them to pull those clue words out. Um, it might be that we're looking at specific parts of speech, punctuation, grammar, um, language features, whatever it is that we're looking for, I want them to pull it out of here and it will stack up on the side over here. Now because we're going to be dragging things around the page, what I don't want to happen is for this line to also drag around the page, so I'm going to lock that down in place. And I'm going to do that by selecting it. So I can click on it here. And depending on how fat you've made your line, it can be really difficult to pick mm. that line up. So I can actually just drag a little box like this. Whoops, except I've got all of my text in there as well. And it will select it. Now up here, we have a thing called Cheats Right Hand Click. Because in order to lock this down, I would have to right click on that line. And you can imagine that right clicking on that tiny thin little line could be difficult. So up here, this blue and white icon here is what I call Cheats Right Hand Click. Gives you your right hand click options. And I'm going to choose Locked. And now, I can't pick up that line. Okay, it won't move around. 
Now the third and final thing I'm going to do for my students is make it really easy for them to select the word or punctuation that we're looking for and drag out. So to do that I'm going to set an action called extract text. To do this I need to see my browser which is this here. If you don't have that showing you can bring it back, go to view, browsers and you'll also notice a keyboard shortcut. It's command B for Mac users or control B for uh, Windows users if you want the keyboard shortcut. Okay, I'm going to pin that out. Now I'm coming to my action browser. At the moment everything is grayed out here. That's because I have to actually select the item on the page that I want to set the action to. And I want to set the action to this text. Now it's important that I just click once so that it's selected. I don't want to click twice because that would actually open my text box and allow me to edit the text. I don't want to do that. So I just select once and you'll see over here I've got a list of things. These are all of the actions available to you in Active Inspire in an alphabetical list. Okay, if you want to at the top, there's ways you can cut those lists down. All right, I'm going to leave it on all actions just to show you that this is an alphabetical list, and I'm going to come down to E for extract text. There it is. So I'm going to select extract text. And then I'm going to choose apply changes. This is the very important final step that people often forget. Done. All right, so those steps again. I had to select the text on my page, go into my action browser, come down to extract text, and say apply changes. I'm going to unpin that. And now, when I hover over my text, instead of just my normal cursor that I see, I have a play button. Okay, that shows me there's an action there. And now, if I click on it, or if the students click on it, we can be pulling out the parts of speech or the language features that we want to, the keywords that are telling us about the themes or the messaging in the text or um, whatever it is that we are focusing on. Okay, so that's just a little idea there and of course everything scrolls as we need it because we've used the page extender here. Hopefully that was a nice little idea or a tip. This could be used modeling, whole class discussions, it could be used in small group work, leaving the students at the board to work collaboratively and of course that will then engage deeper thinking with all of their discussions that they're having around which language features actually emphasize what. Hopefully that's a helpful tip.